Seven Books for the Global Methodist Church Resources for Clergy and Congregations Considering the New Denomination What is the Global Methodist Church? The Global Methodist Church is a church committed to making disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. The Global Methodist Church is filled with warm-hearted, Jesus-loving, and Holy Spirit-inspired people. They are grounded in Scripture and the life-giving confessions of the Christian faith, found in the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. The Global Methodist Church officially came into existence on May 1, 2022. More information can be found at globalmethodist.org. The Next Methodism the next Methodism invites readers on a journey to discover the vitality, richness, and sheer goodness of the broader Wesleyan tradition. Methodism began in England as a movement to spread scriptural holiness across the land, to reform the church, and ultimately to reform the nation. It was a gracious movement of the Holy Spirit, guided by scripture, the tradition of, West, of Christian witness, and the light of reason. Methodism is now itself on the cusp of renewal, and the authors of the present volume, scholars and church leaders committed to the Wesleyan message, are convinced that this renewed Wesleyan movement will emerge as unapologetically orthodox, authentically sacramental, vigorously engaged with the poor, and loving towards all people in nothing less than the holy love of Jesus Christ. The next Methodism will proclaim the good news of Christ that sets captives free in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. And below I have listed all of the authors for this work, uh, and it is edited by Kenneth Collins and Ryan Danker. The 19 Questions to Kindle a Wesleyan Spirit by Carolyn Moore Wesley's historic questions have been asked of those considered for full connection, ordination, since as early as 1784, the first conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church, presided over by Francis Asbury and Thomas Coke. The questions also have a broader Wesleyan context. Many of these questions were originally used with the people Wesley called helpers, laymen, and women to whom Wesley gave responsibilities for leadership in the Methodist societies. They were class leaders, stewards, local preachers, and traveling preachers. The questions address topics Wesley believed to be essential for persons responsible for leading others in discipleship and mission in the world. The 19 questions cover topics from faith in Christ to spiritual practices to death. The questions around commitment to the rules of the church have a contemporary urgency in this season of division. Building from her blog on the 19 questions, Are You Going On to Perfection? at artofholiness.com, Carolyn will thoughtfully unpack each question in a historical and personal way. The Call to Holiness Pursuing the Heart of God for the Love of the World by Timothy Tennant The word holiness comes from the Hebrew word kadash, which means to separate or set apart or to distinguish. Holiness is central to the Christian understanding of the gospel, and we are called to be holy because of the simple fact that God is holy. The Meditations in the Call of Holiness, Pursuing the Heart of God for the Love of the World, explores how God's holiness is manifested within the larger framework of His self-revelation as found in the Bible and in our lives. These short reflections demonstrate that holiness, along with all of God's other amazing attributes, always informs who He is in all His dealings with us. An examination of this important doctrine will lead us to a deeper relationship with God and one another, and ultimately will affect how we live in the world. For the Body, Recovering a Theology of Gender, Sexuality, and the Human Body. This is also by Timothy Tennant. An in-depth look at what it means to be created in the image of God, and how our bodies serve as icons that illuminate God's purposes instead of ours. The human body is an amazing gift, yet today many people downplay its importance and fail to understand what Christianity teaches about our bodies and their God-given purposes. Many people misunderstood how the body was designed, its role in relating to others, and we lack awareness of the dangers of objectifying the body 
divorcing it from its intended purposes. Timothy Tennant covers topics like marriage, family, singleness, and friendship, and he looks at how the human body has been objectified in art and media today. For the body offers a biblical framework for discipling people today in a Christian theology of the body. Tennant, theologian and president of Asbury Theological Seminary, explores the contours of a robust Christian vision of the body, human sexuality, and the variety of different ways we are called into relationships with others. This book will reveal a theological vision that informs our self-understanding of our own bodies, examines how we treat others, and reevaluates how we engage today's controversial and difficult discussions on human sexuality with grace, wisdom, and confidence. For the body is a call to deeper understanding of our bodies and an invitation to recapture the wonder of this amazing gift. Perfect Love, Recovering Entire Sanctification, The Lost Power of the Methodist Movement by Kevin Watson. Perfect Love is a wake-up call to the people called Methodists. According to John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, God raised up Methodism in order to spread the central teaching of entire sanctification. The church has offered an unbalanced understanding of the gospel for too long. The promise of forgiveness and pardon through faith in Jesus Christ has been emphasized in many parts of the body of Christ. Initial, converse, initial conversion and new birth are good news indeed, but they are also just the beginning of the life that is promised to us in the Bible. Jesus came not only so that, the, so that we could be forgiven, but so that we could have, a, we could have life abundantly. The Rise of Theological Liberalism and the Decline of American Methodism by James V. Heidinger II. Jim Heidinger has given a gift to the church. He helps the reader comprehend the complex factors and forces that have combined to gut the evangelical passion for souls in orthodox theology that was the core of the American Wesleyan movement. For those who have been wading through the turbulence that theological liberalism has caused in our church, this book will help you understand how we got here. Dialogues Amongst the People Called United Methodist by William J. Abraham This series of dialogues seeks to capture something of the positions of those who have shaped the debates that have brought the church to the brink, as well as something of their character and personality. It is these broad types that ultimately will go a long way to determine how the current crisis gets resolved. Recent dramatic developments in the United Methodist Church have centered on the refusal by some elders and bishops not just to disregard church law, but to challenge it and nullify its effects. Many are now convinced that it is time to look to separation, look time to look separation in the eye. Others see this as a catastrophe to be avoided at any price, and yet others still are convinced that allowing for a local option Will save the day. Folk at all levels disagree on what this crisis, on what the crisis is, how to understand its causes, and how to solve it. By develop, by deploying the genre of dialogues, the author sets out to provide a realistic and nuanced account of the chief actors involved in their respective positions. The interchange is frank, focused, and forthright. The result is a refreshing airing of the issues in a rigorous and witty exchange of views. It is indispensable reading for all who care about the future of the United Methodist Church. Right here, I've included links to each of the seven books that were mentioned um, throughout this presentation. Um, these links will also be attached below, so you can click through there. Um, you can either rent or purchase these books um, to find out more information that will be helpful for churches considering joining the Global Methodist Church and also um, churches that choose to stay within the United Methodist Church, um, they can use these resources to um, um, provide conversations with other people in their congregations. Now, additional resources I've got, some of these will be helpful. Seedbed Publishing, seedbed.com. You've got Good News, goodnewsmag.org. Firebrand Magazine, it's firebrandmag.com. And some further reading, I would suggest Methodism, A Very Short Introduction by William J. Abraham. The Class Meeting, Reclaiming a Forgotten and Essential Small Group Experience 
by Kevin Watson, and Scripture and the Life of God by David Watson.